our dear brother, brother, brother Lawrence will bring to us the meditation song. And then the next voice you hear is that of our first elder, Elder Fensley Smith. Heaven's rose on the farm and a hillside, a day like none other before. When justice is grace, one man to embrace, he cried, it is finished, my suffering he bore, and it happened in a moment of time, just one moment, and oh, what a new life began. He died on the tree that we might go free. And it happened in a moment of time. Then one day I stood on the crossroad. Then I hear the cry from the tree. And somehow I knew that the message was true. And I took the payment that he gave for me. And it happened in a moment of time. Just one moment, and oh, what a new life began. He died on the tree that we might go free. And it happened in a moment of time just one moment you see can change eternity what will you do in this moment of time Check, check. Happy Sabbath Church. What a beautiful song. I want to thank Ella Lawrence for that wonderful song. And Ella Marlon for being so kind to me with those words of introduction. And I came in and hear Sister Ivet singing down the place. Wow, I tell you that that detox program looks like it's having some serious effect. <laughs> if, if you look at me and I look like I'm losing a, a few pounds, uh, there are some ladies in the church to be uh, credited or blamed for it. I, thank you, son, but I'll... I like to I like to hold the mic in my hand. I, I like to have the mic in my hand. Um, thank you so much. Yes, the um, uh, detox program. I tell you, I, I feel like I'm disappearing. <laughs> wow. 
it is it is indeed working uh it has been good amen, amen. and for those of you who have not joined up yet get on the program i i have been detoxing since 2017 but this one is a special one <laughs> <laughs> this one is a serious one this one is going for a whole week <laughs> But it has, been a, it has been a very good experience and something that you would never think would be tasty, very, very tasty. Yeah. I won't tell you what they are. Should I tell you? You want to hear? You don't want to hear? Uh -huh. you, you ever think about eating raw string bean? Raw okra? Raw pumpkin? <laughs> it is actually very tasty when you put it together, though. So... I'm not complaining. It's just, it's, um, it's an experience. It's an experience. God is good. Amen? God is good. Church of God, I don't know if you realize, but God is soon to come. And everything around us is pointing to the soon coming of Jesus. Every, every time you hear the news, every time you look at what is happening in nature, every time you look in the environment, you see the Bible has already told us that these things were going to happen in the last days just before Christ's coming, and we see them unfolding just before our eyes. And because of that, it's very important for us to take our lives seriously, including our health. We need healthy minds in order to praise God. Amen? Amen. Uh, Sister Venetia, it's so good to see you. Missed you for a couple of weeks. Amen. Well, we're here praying for you. You know the challenges that you would have gone through, and I know victory is yours. Amen? Amen. It's so good to have you back. I, um, I used to work at an institution in Jamaica um, as an instructor and uh, in engineering. And while I was working there, I was very, very miserable because the manager didn't seem to want to work with me. I can't tell you why. The only thing I can tell you is that Whenever it comes to anything to do with Christianity, I was at the heart of it. And they, had, they used to have worship with the students in the mornings, and they, they decided that they were going to cut out the worship. So we said, we stop call it worship, and we start call it general assembly. And many other times when you couldn't find an instructor to be there, I was there present and ready to preach to the student and instruct them in righteousness. And on Sabbath, I would take them to church with me. A number of them would come to church with me. And, um, but for somehow, the manager didn't seem to. I, I really wanted to leave. I went to work this course every day. I had my resignation on my laptop, and I would make sure every day I carry my laptop to work. It was my personal laptop, and I bring my resignation. Because I couldn't wait to just tender my resignation. I was frustrated. But when I went to pray to God and tell God that I wanted to leave this place, God was telling me, it's not time for you to leave. You have a work here to do. And, and I, 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 got, I got that from God that I was supposed to stay there until he was ready to move me. But I still wrote um, resumes and applications and sent them all over. And it's the worst responses I've ever gotten in my life. As a matter of fact, I've never applied for a job outside of that time. Never have to apply for a job. Only that time when God told me not to move, I was applying for a job because I was frustrated. I wanted to leave. Now I'm working at this institution and I was never going to be promoted or, or any, or I, was, I had nowhere going. But by default, I was promoted to senior management because it was time for the a position came up. And there was nobody more senior. There was nobody more qualified. There was nobody more uh, that could fit in the role than I could. So by default, I had to get the position. So I was promoted. So I was a part of senior management team. So I would go to senior management meeting. I would do every, I would carry out all my responsibilities that I know I should carry out. But the manager never gave me any, anything to do. I just did what I know I was supposed to do, but it would give everybody else responsibility on the senior management team except me. And the reviews I was getting from those on the senior management was, boy, the manager not in favor of you. But I was, that was fine with me because I knew my job and I was doing it, but it's frustrating when you're working with somebody who don't want to work with you. 
And I, I just kept going to work, doing my thing, and still, God, I need to leave this place. I wanted to leave. And so many reasons why I wanted to leave. But I also didn't want to come out of God's will. So I stayed and I stayed there. Now, while I was there working one day, they had a delegation. They had a delegation from the Cayman Islands visiting Jamaica and visiting the institution. And the manager sent out his secretary to call members of the senior management team. He sent from the deputy manager come right down. He couldn't find nobody. Nobody was on the, on the, on, in the institution. And guess what? The person, the person told me that they went back to the manager and said, but, but um, Mr. Smith is here. And the manager said, okay, go ahead and call him. There was nobody else on the senior management team on the compound at that time. Now, for this thing to happen, this is next to impossible. Next to impossible. That your entire senior management team would not be at work. Would not be on the, on, in the institution at the time. But guess what? I was there. I'm always there. <laughs> For the hours I get paid and more than I get paid, I was always there. So I went and we toured the, um, we toured the institution. One, one of the person who was in that delegation became premier of this country, along with lots of other high official people. And I was there and they toured. And I was the only senior person with the manager touring. And when they were finished, I said to them, I need to show you an example of what you're looking for. Come, let me show you something. And I took the team to a, 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 a class that I was teaching. And surprisingly, all these high-colored, white and high-colored people walk into the room and the students did not realize, all of them black like me, and none of them realized that these people entered the room. They were so in, involved in what they were doing that they, they didn't realize that the delegation came into the room. And I had to call their attention that, hi guys, we have some visitors here. And they all stopped what they were doing and they started, we started talking to them. And after, after talking to them, talking to the students and showing the delegation what, they were looking for TVET programs in the Cayman Islands and showing them what, you know, the, the practicality of what they're looking for. They were seeing it in the room. And the manager stepped out of the room to lead the delegation out of the, out of the workshop. And as soon as he turned out to lead them, everybody turned around to me and said, would you come and be a part of our, our staff? And I, I, I they slipped me a card, and you know, at the time you want to jump and touch the ceiling because you want to leave this place. <laughs> but at the same time, you want to be diplomatic. So I'm like, I'll think about it. And I wanted to jump and touch the roof. Yeah, I'm like, I'll think about it. But I'm saying this to say, Church of a Living God, when you do God's will and you stay in God's will, God will create the circumstances to take you out of situation in the most impossible way that you could ever imagine. And they, I wrote them because of the email and the email went back and forth. Now, this was strange because the institution sent a dele delegation to the Cayman Islands with a number of instructors who came here and worked and performed really well and was hoping that they would be the one that would be here working. And I wasn't sent. I wasn't I was sent to be a part of that delegation. But God would bypass every single one of them except one. Except one, who is a fellow Seventh-day Adventist like myself. And we were the only two people that they employed to come to the Cayman Islands to set up the TVET program on the island. So, so, so when God is working Church of a Living God, and you're in God's will. You don't need to jump the gun. All you need to do is to be still and know that God is God. Amen. That's all you need to do. I pray that bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, O oh God, for your love, your mercy, and your goodness. 
And to know, Lord, that you will never forget your children. But God, you will always honor those who do your will, Lord, and follow your leading. Help us, O oh God, that we'll always stay with you, God. We'll always trust you. We'll always receive of your grace and your mercy and your goodness as you lead us, O oh God, into the way everlasting. Today, God, I pray that you may hide this lump of clay behind the old rugged cross, and you may speak a word to your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The theme that was given me uh, is stay on board. What's the theme? Stay on board. It means that whatever comes what may, we need to stay on board the ship, the ship of Zion. This ship is soon to be landed on the Sea of Glass, and if we find ourselves outside of this ship, it's going to be a terrifying experience based on what we read in the Bible. So it's very important for us to stay on board. And that's the theme that we're given today. Should have been and would have been New Converts Day. But unfortunately, uh, it's not fully. It's a, it's a miniature or it's a precursor to the New Converts Day that we will have sometime in the future. Now we're looking today at, the, the theme is stay on board, and we're looking at the mercies of God. Amen? Amen. We must stay on board because of the mercies of God. We need to stay on board. I don't think my clicker is working. Okay. Now, we pick up the story in 2 Samuel chapter 11, reading from verse 1 to 5. It says here, And it came to pass, after the years was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Verse 5. Can you read verse 5 with me? And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Church of living God, the Bible does not praise men. There's nowhere in the Bible where you see the Bible praise men. And if the Bible was to praise any man, it would, be, it would possibly be David. But from this story, you could see exactly why the Bible does not praise any man. And this is not without a reason why the Bible does not praise man. Because all the good qualities that men can portray comes from Almighty God. There's nothing that we do of ourselves that is good that comes from us. Because the truth is that there ain't much good in us. Every good thing that we do comes from Almighty God. And that is why it, it is not wise to look at any man and praise him. And this was why the Bible tells you you must not bow down to any idol and worship. And that idol include mankind. And it include bank account and material things. Church of the living God, we owe all we have and all we are to God. In the, in the end, in the final analysis, we are but instruments in the hands of God. Amen. Ellen White writes, It is a perilous thing to praise or exalt men. For if one comes to lose sight of his entire dependence on God, and to trust to his own strength, he is sure to fall. 
Man is contending with foes who are stronger than he. So if we're going to stay on board church of a living God, we can't put any trust in mankind. We can't put any trust in any system on earth if we're going to stay on board. Our entire trust has to be in God. Because we're contending with Satan and one third of the hosts of heaven were down here as demons and devils. And they don't take holidays. They are on our tracks every turn we turn. And she continues uh, quoting from Ephesians 6 verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. Church of a living God, it's not wise, it's not sensible to trust in the boss at work. It's not wise or sensible to trust in the politician. It's not wise or sensible to trust in the elder or the pastor. Our entire dependence is on Almighty God. It is impossible for us, church, in our own strength to maintain this conflict that is upon us in this world. Church of a living God. Ellen White writes, the work of the enemy is not an abrupt work. It's not what? It's not an abrupt work. You don't get up one day and be a murderer just like that. No one gets up and be a, 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 an adulterer just like that. No one get up and be a liar just like that. It starts with one little sin at a time. And before you know it, you are deeper in than you bargained for. Church of the living God, David. Why did a man who the Bible declared a man after God's own heart sang so low? The truth is, church of the living God, he took his eyes off Jesus. He developed some attributes, church of the living God, that tended only to his ruin. David developed self-confidence. When he should be at war and, 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 and leading the army, he decided that he don't need to be out there anymore. He is confident he can just leave it to somebody else and the work will be done. David developed self-exaltation. The flattery of those around him let him think that he was high and in charge. The allurements of luxury and power caused David to sing so low. When David was running from Saul and hiding in caves and moving from one city to the next, David's utter dependence was on Almighty God. Every time David wanted to make a move, he would send a priest, he would send a prophet to go inquire of God before he made a serious decision. But now he was king of Israel had conquered almost the entire nations around him, had gold and silver and wives and houses and concubines and money, his heart well up in him. And he thought that he was at ease. The world, Ellen White write that the world, the customs of the other nations tend to David's ruin. When we start looking on the customs around us and we start get gravitating towards the church of the living God, we are on our path to destruction. Because most of the customs that we find in the world now, they cut against the dust of the Lord. They're exalting man and devils and demons. David finds himself caught up in the world of customs. It is written that in, in other eastern countries, the law that governs the people were not binding upon the king. So David being king thought that he was bigger than the law. The law is for the common people, it's not for me. So he thought he could do a little thing and make a little move and get away with it. But church of living God, this weakened David's sense of the exceeding sinfulness of sin. He started relying on his own wisdom and might. Not only that church of God, idleness plays a big role in David's downfall. When he should be out there working, when the other kings were out there working and fighting war, David was at ease in Zion. And the Bible said that the hypocrites are at ease in Zion. My grandma would say, 
The devil find work to give idle hands. So she always makes sure you're working. And every time you tend to sit down, she gives you something to do. The devil find work to give idle hands. And this was what David find himself being idle. If David was at work, Church of the Living God, he would not face this temptation. When he saw her, he lusted after her. Then after he lusted after her, he inquired after her. Hearing that this woman was a married woman, the natural thing to do would be to leave her alone. And if he, if he wanted her being the king, he could send for her and marry her. But she was already married. But David thought in his heart that he could just spend a little time with her and get to know her and hang out with her. And before you know it, he was, he was in bed with her. Church of living God, sin. The work of the enemy is not abrupt. Sin is a downward spiral. It is not at the outset sudden and startling. It is a secret undermining of the strong words of the principle. You break a little principle here, and a little principle there, and a little principle there, and before you know it, you are fully black box lit. It begins in apparent small things, the neglect to be true to God and to rely upon him wholly. The disposition to follow the customs and practices of the world. Church of a living God, if we are going to stay on board, we have to make sure that we are guarding the very avenues of our minds. And the little things, we make sure that we're guarding our minds against the little things because a little here and a little there, by the time you know it, you're in full-blown rebellion against God and find yourself out of the kingdom of God. But when he came, she lay with her. When she came, he lay with her. Church of the living God, the devil eats away at our Christianity like Kyanka worm. Anybody in here know Kyanka worm? If you know canker worm, put up your hand. A lot of you know canker worm and don't even know that you know it. You see those little worms there? You don't know what those little worms have done to me over the years. I plant callaloo and I see three or four of them on the callaloo. And if you leave them there for a week, when you come back, you don't have no callaloo. They eat off every chlorophyll. All you see is some little sticks running through the leaf like that, and they eat off everything. I plant pop chow, I plant other things, and those little worms there, as small as you see, they are there. They are deadly and dangerous. They have, they, they have fought me over the years. And, and that is how the devil fight us each day. They, 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 Take a little nibble, a little nibble, a little nibble at our spiritual life. And, and, and if you don't take stance and stand up and get rid of them, they eat out your spirituality. Like those kyanka worms. When, when, you, when I buy Kalaluna, I, I soak it in salt water. Because when you put Kalaluna in salt water, all of those kyanka worms drop off. If, if, they're, if they're on it, they drop off. They can't take the salt water. Pop or whatever, soak it in salt water. But but those are the guys there, very deadly. And that is how the demons and the and the, and the devils, that is how they they, they, they they attack our Christianity. A little nibble, little nibble. As small as you see them there, you would never believe what they'll do over 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 a small short period of time. You go there and say five, tomorrow you go back, you're gonna see 50. And by the time a week pass, you don't have no crop left. And this is how the enemy attack us, church of living God. In farming, people use pesticide. The pesticide of our spiritual life is to keep our eyes on Jesus. To have faith in Jesus, no matter we, what we find ourselves involved in, or no matter what the situation, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Now, church of living God, David finds himself in a big dilemma. But Sheba, whose fateful, fatal beauty attracted him, was not pregnant. Her husband was miles away. So even if you want to give him a little jacket, it can't work. Because you can't, you can't knock her up and send her home to her husband. So David finds himself in a deep dilemma. 
I don't know people who say that their Christian life is boring. My Christian life is exciting. When I read the Bible, I can tell you, Hollywood cannot provide any movie that can be exciting like the Bible. The Bible is intriguing church of a living God. And I love God because God does not cover up the dirt of his ministers and of his apostles and of his prophets. God does not cover up the dirt. God exposes it. And the Bible tells us that there are examples unto us to keep us from falling. Amen. When I read the Bible, sometimes I have to run outside and, and, and I, have to, I have to laugh and praise Jesus. I watch no movie and do that. A movie might let like you sit down and cry. But in a movie, make you run outside excited and walk down the road praising. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And when you reach the bottom of the road, you realize, wait, people might think I'm mad. <laughs> One day I, I was just praising the Lord. I read my Bible and I was so excited. I was walking on the road, just praising the Lord, just praising the Lord. And when I look, I see a lady, uh, I see the, the, some, one of the neighbors help her outside, washing out the map. And the lady stand up looking at me like this. I'm like, oh my God. Because I know in her head she must say that one God cuckoo. <laughs> I catch up myself and I go back to my house to read my Bible. Listen, the Bible is the exciting church of a living God. Yes, she's pregnant. And then she says, it's better than any soap opera. And then she's saying to tell the king, guess what, I'm pregnant. And if, if this was a movie, this is where you take the intermission. Right there, you take a break. And you bring all the advertisement. Because you're moving. Even if you run to the bathroom, you're coming back quickly. And if you have to get some popcorn or juice in no time, you reach back. Because guess what, you want to know what is coming. This is a sequel. The Bible is exciting. Now, couple with that church of the living God that Uri was away. You don't understand what is happening here, no? Because nowadays, they have adultery. Adultery is like nothing. Uh, 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 committing adultery is like nothing. I, I read this article this week, and, and I find it fascinating. I was, I, I was, I was, I was on the internet, and it popped up, pop up on my screen, and I, and I find it fascinating. Adultery you now, people just sleep around with each other and there's no law against it. And, and so, so to us, it's like, oh, it's adultery. You, you don't understand what is happening. I, I saw this article this week. It says, committing adultery may no longer be a crime in New York State. The legislators' upper chamber voted Wednesday, this is this Wednesday, to remove it from the penal code with 57 votes in favor. The four no votes were cast by Democrat state senators and they named them there. Some of you didn't even know that adultery was a crime. But the truth is that the, the laws of the land, every single land you see on earth here, the laws were based off the Bible. But the devil, like a canker worm, keep eating at them over time until some of these laws are still not binding. So, so here in New York, they have voted for adultery no longer to be a crime. And the, 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 I, I was watching, the, there's a new car, news cast on it, and they were saying that it doesn't make no sense anymore because this law is not being enforced. They say in years you might have five people coming up with, 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 with charges against people for adultery. They say, let's move the laws of the last book. This is where earth is gone, church of the living God. When man openly breaks the laws of God and it doesn't mean anything to anybody. So, so in 2024, where adultery is coming out of the law's book in, in, the, in, the, in the biggest metropolis in the world, it's hard for you to understand what was happening back then. You have to understand that back then, the penalty for the crime of adultery was murder. If you, if you commit adultery, you would get the death sentence. And David, being the king, would pronounce the, the, this death sentence on a lot of people. And now the death sentence is staring him in the face. Not only him, but Bathsheba. They would be stoned to death. So, so, so it might sound like that much, but back then it was a big crime, not just to God, but to the state. And the person in the state who God put in charge to uphold this law was the person who broke the law. And David find himself in serious trouble. No church of living God. I tell you, this is intriguing. Nobody, would, nobody knew what was going to happen. Because here the king got the man. 
is one of his most trusted servants who was very faithful to him. He got his wife pregnant. And the king had death hanging over his head along with this woman. And this would, this would probably be another, another commercial break. So we can see what is going to happen next. <laughs> if it was happening now, it would, be, it would be the hottest news around. I can tell you that every blogger, every vlogger, every news agency would send their reporter on spot in, in, in Jerusalem to find out what is happening there in Jerusalem because this is serious news. But the king was beside himself with what to do. He knew that if these things was, was known, Uriah himself would probably kill him or he would incite a revolt in the country. And this was not good for him or for Israel. So the David, instead of relying on God, he decided that he was going to come up with some strategies. And anytime we find ourselves in life coming up with strategies without consulting God, we know that we're in a downward spiral. I don't care how important or how big this thing is in your life. If you start strategize and have not contacted God, you are, you are, you are, you, you are up for being ruined. David find himself in trouble and he starts strategizing. You know what happened? He said, the only way I can give you guys this, this jacket, we have to bring him home. And all my Jamaican people know what jacket is. It's when a man father a child that don't belong to him. But it belonged to another man, as in this case. So we have to bring Uriah home. So it's, he being the king sent for Uriah. So Uriah, go down to your house and sleep with your wife and enjoy yourself. Tomorrow, David sent back and asked the servants what happened to Uriah. They said, Uriah out in the gate sleeping with the servant. And David sent for Uriah and said, Uriah, I sent you to your house to enjoy time with the wife. What are you doing? He said, King, the ark of God is out there on the battlefield. Joab and the army of Israel is out there on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the battlefield. And I, I will never, I will never go enjoy the comfort of my wife while those guys are out there with the ark of God. This is how faithful Uriah was. He was a faithful, trusted sentinel. He's a man that you could trust with your money, with anything that you have. So David invited the man for dinner. And give the man liquor to drink. I don't know where the king of Israel would man after own God find liquor. But the Bible said give him liquor and drunk Uriah. And send him down to his wife. Still Uriah decided that he ain't going home. He slept with the servant. And when David, David realized that his strategy was not working. Still he did not go to God and say God I need your help. David decided that the one way that this thing can work. Is to kill Uriah. And once you kill Uriah, now we can marry the wife and everything is fixed. So David come up with a great strategy. Now you have to realize that Satan who ruined Saul was not working on David to ruin him. So Satan now, Satan now was, was, was David right hand helper telling him to do all of these wickedness. And church of a living God, guess what? When David come up with all of these strategy, you know, he thought that, listen, man, this is brilliant. Nobody can find this out. He thought there would be no suspicion. Because if we have Uriah killed by the enemy army, then it, it cannot link back to the throne. Everybody will, will think that it, was, it, was, it happened out there. But you have never heard about church members in 2024. A young couple, a young man and a young woman get married. And they decide to have a baby. And all the, the baby born and they start checking backward. They got married in July last year. And, and July, August, and they count down. But, but now it's January and the baby born. No, 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 no. Uh, nine months are gone yet, man. This uh, is a shotgun wedding them up. They, they, they have never heard about church members in 2024. They, they, they are mathematicians. They, they start counting it. John, come here, man. Come here, John. You don't understand this. At July, they're married. And they've been born already. No, something wrong. 
July, August, September, October, and at January. I'm being, no, no, something wrong, something, something. You, you know, you know, see a shotgun right when this, this is a shotgun wedding. So, so, so this thing that David thought he was cooking up and could cover up, it was exposed and the people knew it. But most importantly, church of the living God, God knew what he did. And sometimes we think that we can hide our deeds from mankind, but even when we have it well covered up, guess what? God knows the evil that we're doing. David, who God had, had picked to lead his people, led them with such fidelity. As a monarch, no leader equal David in leadership. In 2 Samuel 12, verse 14, before we even get to that, there's a text here in 2 Samuel 8, verse 15. It says, David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. Before David get to this point, David was such a faithful man of God. Faithful man of God. Executing justice unto all the people. Now David sang so low. And in time, Church of Living God, the secret came out. And you have to know that the Lord was disappointed. The Lord was dishonored. He had favored and exalted David, and David's sin misrepresented the character of God. Cast reproach upon his name. It, in, it tended to lower the standard of godliness in Israel, to lessen in many minds the abhorrence of sin, while those who did not love and fear God were by it emboldened in transgression. Church of the living God, as a Christian, as a Seventh-day Adventist, as a member of the church, when we sin in the community, we give the community license to sin. They're saying one thing, God cannot do what he said that he, he will do to protect his people. And two, God does not have the power to allow his children not to sin. So this thing that you call Seventh-day Adventism, it doesn't work. So, so, so we're giving them power and license to go out and sin. So if we're going to stay on board church of a living God, we have to stay with God. We have to stay with God. Amen? In 2 Samuel 12 and verse 14, God sent Nathan to David. And when God sent Nathan to David, Nathan was a wise prophet. He didn't go and say, David, you know your sin. David probably would have killed him. But Nathan went to him with a parable. He said, this rich man in the community, he have flocks and herds and sheep. He's rotten rich. And there's one man with one little ewe lamb. So precious to him, he kept the little ewe lamb in his bosom. You know, like a child, he grew up this little ewe lamb. And the, 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 the rich man had a friend come from far. Instead of killing one of his own flocks, he went and took the little ewe lamb and killed him to give the wayfaring traveler. And when David heard that, David anger rose up within him. He said, surely this man deserved to be put to death. And he shall pay four, four foes. And Nathan looked him in the face and pointed his finger and said, you are the man. And when David heard that you are the man, it, it pretty much paralyzed him. He, he was shocked. And David, instead of doing what some people in 24, 24 would do, he acknowledged that he had sinned against God. And this was the start of David's upward spiral again. Church of the living God, none of us is beyond falling into sin. But the God that we serve will not leave us there. He will come after us. Anybody goes to hell, they goes to hell over the bloody, beaten bodies of, body of Jesus Christ because Everywhere you go, you will see Jesus trying to restore you. Ellen White writes, those who, by pointing to the example of David, try to lessen the guilt of their own sins, should learn from the Bible record that the way of the transgression is a hard one. It's a hard life to transgress against. Ask Paul. Jesus said, why are you kicking against a prick? 
Because Paul swear that he was doing God's will. But when he find what he was doing, he was kicking against a hard stone. The way of the transgression is a hard life, church of living God. When we find ourselves sinning against God, it is very important for us to pull our socks up and get back to God. Though like David, they should turn from their evil course, the result of sin, even in this life, will be found bitter and hard to bear. There are some people who come to church and be Christians, church of living God, but they will still suffer the effect of smoking alcohol, smoking tobacco and drinking alcohol for a number of years. So it's very important for us not to start the journey in sin because the end of that journey is a very hard one. David, after being confronted by Nathan the prophet with God's message, wrote Psalms 32 and Psalms 51. Okay, here we go. Now Psalms 32 and Psalms 51 have some different theme. It have the theme of deep confession for sins. He confessed, he acknowledges sins and he confessed them. He also asked God to pardon him. He asked God to give him peace in his conscience. He asked God for grace to go and sin no more. He asked for liberty to access, of access to God. He pledged to work for the good of the souls of others, for the glory of God. And lastly, in those Psalms, David prayed for Zion and for Jerusalem. Church of the living God. I, I, when I read this, I, I wondered to myself, it, it, to me, it does make no sense. Because Nathan already told David that his sins were forgiven. God has forgiven your sin, so you won't die. And I'm asking myself, then, if God forgive my sins and I won't die, why do I need to go and have this deep confession? Why is it important on me now to go and deeply confess my sins? And, 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 and I started to, to reading and start researching. And I started looking at Psalm 51, verse 1 to 3, where David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Church of a living God, verse 2 says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now, they had ceremonial washing in Israel. And David knew about these ceremonial washings and how they would wash themselves. When you go to Israel, you see all these different baths and fountains where they do these ceremonial washings. And David knew that in order for him to be clean, to be freely clean, he had to go wash himself. But guess what? God put away his sin. But in conscience, David was not free. David was not free in his conscience. He had killed a man. He had taken a man's wife. He had sinned against Almighty God. He is, he, has, he is causing many in Israel to revolt against God. So he needed that freedom of conscience. He plead, for, he plead for the washing to separate him from his sins. He also pleads for cleansing. Sin defiles us, church of the living God. Sin makes us odorous. Sin makes us smelly and repul repugnant. Sin to God is disgusting. God, sin to God is loathsome. In, in the sight of God, sin is just a horrible thing. And David was said, please God, please God, take it away from me. It made me uneasy. I don't feel like I am set myself. Please God, help me. In verse 3, he said, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. If we're going to get forgiveness of our sins, we first have to acknowledge that we have sinned against God Amen. and that we have done wrong. Amen. Although sin, David's sin was pardoned, David did not have peace. He needs to forgive himself and therefore he needs to acknowledge that he had done something wrong. He also keep a check of the wrong he did that he will not repeat them. Every time David would walk on the roof to look over, he would remember the act that he did. Every time he, he, he fell in the arms of Bathsheba, he would remember the heinous crime that he committed. 
Every time he, he took up the pen to write, you remember that letter that he wrote and gave uh, a Uriah and sent him to his demise. So in order not to do it again, David have to acknowledge his transgression and ask God to remove those sins from before him. 1 John 2 verse 1 and 2, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, church of the living God. In verse 4, it's in verse 4, he says, he says in verse 4, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in the sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David's sin was put aside. So why David had to go on this part of confession? David's sin against Bathsheba and, and Uriah were great sins, church of the living God. But the sin against the monarch of heaven was even greater. After God has exalted him so much and put him on the throne to rule over his people, he is here declaring, church of the living God, that he has despised the conduct of Almighty God. He is here uh, recognizing that he disobeyed God's command. He's here crying out that he distrusted God's promises. And he's here crying out that he dishonor his maker and his Lord. Verse 5, behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. And some people read this to say that David was making an excuse for his sin. This is not what was happening, church of the living God. David was saying, God, when I analyze myself, almighty God, I'm a rotten, dirty sinner. I'm a rotten, dirty sinner. I, I, I am the great, great, great grandson of Eve who took on sin in this world. And because of that church of the living God, David was saying, because of that, I'm an adulterer and a murderer. God, have mercy upon me. David was not trying to use this as an excuse, church of the living God. But he was trying to see himself as a rotten, dirty person that he was. And to acknowledge his sinful, murderous nature and pleading to God for deliverance. I'm talking about David a lot. But every single one of us in church here have some kind of sinful, rotten nature. And have something that we need to, to, to go to God and acknowledge that God, I was born in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. And because of that, God, it's only, your, it's only your power, it's only your cleansing blood, it's only because of your sacrifice, it's only your sacrifice and calvary that can change me, oh God, into the saint that you want me to be. If we're going to stay on board church of living God, we have to acknowledge the wrongs that we do. And we have to cry out to God for help. David cry out in verse 7, purge me. Sorry about that. David cried, purge me with his soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Now, this is a sanctuary language. Because when someone in Israel defiled themselves, they had to go to the priest for purging. And the priest would have to take that holy water and use a hyssop and sprinkle it all over them for them to get purging. God, David was saying, God, the priest purging is not good enough for me. I want you, oh God, to, 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 to use your, your, your hyssop and pur sprinkle water and sprinkle your blood on me and clean me up, oh God. And I shall be clean. Wash me, oh God. And I shall be whiter than snow. He will pray for the washing of the soul with the blood of Jesus, church of living God. This was not a physical washing that David was praying for. He was praying that God would wash out his soul, use that blood of Jesus and purge his iniquity and the wickedness that he knew was in him. Then he ends with creating me. In verse 10 he says, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David realized that the spirit of God had left him and the spirit that he was with was not the right spirit. And he was asking God to replace that spirit. Church of living God, none of us is beyond this. David was a man after God's own heart. A man that God used to do so many victories. 
And David found himself in that place. But the good thing about this that is good for us is that just like how God sent Nathan to restore David, God will always send messages, whether through the Bible, whether, in a, whether, whether through a loud mouth preacher like me or somebody, to tell you that God is interested in you. God wants to create a new clean heart in you. God wants to purge you. God wants to save you. Amen. And that's a God that we want to serve. Amen. Church of the living God, this message is not a message of condemnation. This message today is a message about the mercies and the goodness of Almighty God. This message is telling us that none of us have to leave the church because we fall in sin or fall in wrongs because God will always seek to restore us. And that's the God that we serve. What a God! What a wonderful God. Because God is so good and so merciful. When God revealed himself to Moses, God put Moses in the cleft of the rock and revealed himself to him. God received, revealed himself as goodness and gracious and merciful and long-suffering. That God's character is goodness and mercy, church. God is not a dictator. He's not an arbitrary dictator. God is a God of love and mercy. At the same time, he's a God of justice. Because he said he's not clearing the guilty. But that the guilty should turn and live. Amen? Amen. 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 It's not a message of condemnation. Trust God to be your forever friend, church of living God. In God's strength and mercy, endeavor. Just like David confessed, endeavor. Endeavor never, never to despise God's conduct. Never disobey God's commandment. Never distrust God's promises and never dishonor his name. In the event you sinned and mess up, I'm going to say not in the event, when you sin and mess up, go to God in faith for help, church of the living God. Amen. Cast yourself on his mercies. Do not try to work it out. Pray Psalms 51 and, and Psalm 32 and ask God to clean us and restore us. Because what David did in those Psalms, he confessed his sins. He asked for pardon, for peace of conscience, for grace to go and sin no more, for liberty of access to God, for pledge to work for the good of the souls of others, for the glory of God. And lastly, he prayed for the church of the living God. Amen. In the event you try to work it out and you mess up again, in the event you try to work it out and mess it up, you go, go back to two, go back to God. Go back to God. God will always, God will always receive us, church. David's repentance was sincere and deep, church of living God. He did not try to cover up or to excuse his sins. He loathed his sins. He fell, but God lifted him up. Ellen White writes something I found very profound. Ellen White said he was no more fully, listen to this. Ellen White says that when God restored him, he was no more fully in harmony with God and in sympathy with his fellow men than before he fell. Amen. What a God! When God restored you, you're better off than where you were before you sinned. Let me read it again. Let me read that again. Ellen White writes, he was no more fully in harmony with God and in sympathy with his fellow men than before he fell. So why should we get off board? What? We need to stay on board. We need to stay on board because God have grace and mercy for us, church of living God. God will restore us and put us into a better place than we were before we sinned. Amen. When David sinned, his sincere repentance and confession was accepted by God. But church of living God, still he suffered the consequences. Nathan said, sword will not depart from his house, and it never did. Right through the life of David, children, they were butchered and murdered. So there, there's where God is a God of mercy and goodness and long suffering, he's also a God of justice. So we will still suffer the consequences. So the best is for us not to go down that path. Amen. Isaiah 27, verse 5. Let him, oh, let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. 
if we sin and we mess up, God said we must come and make peace with him. And he's willing to make peace with us. In Isaiah 55 verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly part. Why should we get off board when God is a God of mercy and love? God is waiting to pardon somebody. In 1 John 1 verse 8 to 10, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Church of the living God, we have all played the part of David. We may never commit adultery and we might never murder somebody, but all of us have sinned. And all of us need God's pardon. Amen? In Isaiah 1 verse 18, God said, he said to the sinner, he said, he, he, before he get to 18, he said, Israel, he said, the horse know the master's crib. But Israel don't know who their God is. Israel was so far from God, they didn't know who their God was when the horse, when night come the horse, find the master's crib. But Israel's people do not know God. And, and those people who did not know him, I want to have nothing with him. God said, come, come, let us reason together. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as crimson, though they, though they be like scarlet, they should be white as snow. And though they're red like crimson, the sheep shall be as wool. Church of living God, God is calling us to restore us today. Amen. Let us stay on board Amen. as we take the closing song. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 184. Jesus paid it all. You stand. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin and left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now. Thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spot and melt the heart of stone. Jesus made it all, all to him I owe. Sing the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Since nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood. Just before we take that chorus, just before we take that chorus, I'm inviting everybody to come to the altar. We have a pastor here. We're going to ask the pastor to pray for us today. Church of the living God, we have all messed up. We have all played the fool at some time. And here we see where David's sin was forgiven. But yet, although God put away David's sin, David saw it fit to still go and in deep repentance and confession. And every one of us, church of the living God, have played the fool at some time. 
I need that cleansing of, of Almighty God. We're going to ask Pastor to just pray for us and ask that God will just help us, Church of the Living God. Jesus fed it all on to him I owe sin and left the crimson stain he washed it white as snow and when before the throne I stand in incomplete. I lay my trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. I want you to be here in the chorus. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin he washed it white as snow. Just before Pastor pray, I just got a message that Sister Earth, her husband, has lost is two people in his family, two persons who are dear to him, both his mother and grandmother. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm seeing this and it, it is tearing me up. Because I remember I lost my grandmother when, when I was in university and I had to take time off from school because my grandma was so dear to me. I remember when I lost my mom, I remember how dear she was to me. And for somebody to lose both of them one time, I can tell you that that is a horrible experience. We're gonna ask, we're gonna ask him to come forward along with Sister Earth. And I ask that Pastor will just Include them in the prayer. We're going to ask you throughout the rest of the week and throughout the rest of the time. Please call them up. Please visit them. Please pray with them. Give them the support. And from the administration of the church, we're also going to be supporting them. Pastor. Let us pray. Oh God and our Father, we thank you for the spoken word. The Lord, all of us had our fair share. Father, we have distrust you. We have doubted you. We have allowed, Lord, uh, we have allowed the enemy many times to creep in because we took things for granted. Father, we pray in a very special way, Lord, that we will recognize that you are always leading us in the right direction. Father, we recognize also that it is the, the enemy's plan to set us up. But we must be conscious of the fact, Lord, that we must draw nigh unto you. So this afternoon, Lord, we come before you to draw nigh unto you because we have no other one to run to. And we're asking you to create in us a clean heart, oh God and renew a right spirit within us. Father, oh, walk with God is personal. Father, many times we are looking on the right wider congregation, but God, we are here to look on me, to look on myself, to examine and to do a spiritual inventory on our spiritual life, oh God, to see where we are with you. Father, we have been taking our spirituality for granted. Father, we have allowed the busyness. We have allowed other things to crowd out our oh, moment with God. We are saving the world when we are empty. It is our responsibility to ensure that our tank is full spiritually. So, Father, we ask for a recharge. We ask, Lord, for a renewal. We ask, Lord, for that reconnection with you today, that whatsoever we do or say, we will always realize we are in your presence. May we be like Joseph and practice the presence of God. So, Father, 
We pray that you will just be with us as we are at the altar asking you, Lord, for a new start, asking you, Lord, for cleansing and for forgiveness. And not only cleansing, not only repentance, but Lord, a heart that is determined not to go back, but to move forward with you. So, Father, we ask today that you will continue to be with us, be with your man's servant, continue to use him in a mighty way, Lord. The message was timely. Every now and then we need a reminder that we cannot take our eyes off God. If David wasn't spared when he take his eyes off God, we will not be spared if we take our eyes off you. The devil is too slick. But help us, Lord, to stay grounded. Lord, help us never to realize that we can stand on our own because we cannot. May we stay focused in every situation. Then, God, we pray for the grieving family. Lord, this world is full of pain. Lord, this world is stained with sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. God, every time we lose a loved one, we realize that, God, there must come a day when you change the order of things. Father, we know that the word says that one day death will die. Amen. So, Father, we hold on to your promises. This wasn't in your blueprint. Death is a foreign matter. But God, we thank you that your son came so we can have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, I pray that this family will take a hold of you afresh. Father, they're going to need your shoulder to lean on. They're going to need your courage. Father, my mother is still alive. And I can't even wrap my mind around losing my mother. I lost my grandmother, and as a pastor, I cried like a baby. It was so much. Father, bring them comfort. Amen. And other families who are hurting, grieving silently, other families who are broken, need your spiritual nutrition right now, need your spiritual support. Father, in the name of Jesus, this world is tainted with pain. But God, we are grateful that we are not left alone. We are grateful that the reminder is, Lord, I am with you always, even until the end. We are reminded that help is available. We are reminded that we have a bigger brother in Jesus. We are reminded that we have somebody who we can depend on. Father, May when these things happen, we run to Jesus. Yes. Father, may when these things happen, we run and hold on to you. And may you give us your strength. So Lord, give this family your strength. Give your children the strength. Give your people the strength. Be with the Ephesus family. May we be united in mind and spirit. Father, may we set aside our differences. May we recognize we are heading in the same direction. Father, may we recognize that we are not against each other, but Lord, we are, we are a part of your family. We are sons and daughters of God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we will rally to the task. We pray in the name of Jesus that we will not allow the devil to use his slickness and his slyness to divide and to cause dissension, but we will allow the Spirit of God to help us to rally to your cause. Father, we cannot stay in your church so long and still go with the devil. Father, we cannot stay in the church so long every Sabbath out here. Father, sacrificing ourselves and still end up in the same place where the rum drinker is going and those who are prostitutes and those who have made up their minds to go with Satan in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to the Holy Ghost, deliver us, God. May we come honestly before you. May we come honestly before you. 
May we come honestly before you, Father. May we come broken. May we fall on the rock and do not allow the rock to fall on us. Father, today we are asking you for mercy. Lord, I beg of thee that after all our labor and all our dedication, we will not hear depart from me. I know you not. Oh, Father, we ask for a heart like thine. We, we join with Ezekiel, pour clean water upon us now. Yes, Pour clean water upon us today that we will walk in purity, that we'll walk in unity, and that we'll walk in your will so we can bring glory and honor to your name. So, Father, be with us as we say, Oh, Father, we chant in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Let the church of the living God say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. 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 If you're blessed today, can I hear you say, Amen? If you are blessed today, can I hear you say, praise the Lord. Oh, what a timely word I want to say on the behalf of the church. I want to say, Elder, thank you for such a reminder. Every now and then, we need that reminder that we must take or walk with God serious. Amen. That we must take or walk with God serious. We must not take it for granted. Elder, I want you to know I was rich in this, sir. Amen. It was a refreshing word. Good to sit down and listen to a word and you were well fed. Can somebody say amen? amen. I'm that is the importance of spending time in the word. Just before we go, please remember that we resume at 3. We will be doing Bible class at 3 and then break at 4 that we can come back this evening for our prayer meeting at Georgetown at 7.30. So in the, after four, we will not have any service until we join the brethren at Georgetown. The next thing I need to say, brethren, those of you who are saying that we will be at uh, Lion Center is true. So we'll be at Lion Center next week, Sabbath. We won't be here for service next week, Sabbath. There'll be at Lion Center from in the morning. Amen? Amen? So please know that these doors will be closed basically for the next four weeks. We want to ensure that we stay together, brethren. We want to ensure that we're inviting out our friends. Please remember the street meeting for tomorrow night, uh, 7 o'clock at, 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 oh, they shifted back to Gold. Okay, they shifted back to Mr. Gold Plaza. So it seems like we didn't get the location at Mr. Milo. Oh, see. So we are at Gold's Plaza, brethren. So we're looking forward to it. It's just by where Miss Elaine used to be. All right. We didn't get the location. So we are looking forward to see you tomorrow at Gold's Plaza. Yes. Yeah. At Miss Elaine Restaurant. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay strong. Stay blessed. Amen. This makes us